welcome. I'm, I'm so glad you're here with me tonight at the class, our, our class self-care for rejuvenation, detox, and weight loss. So I'm a nutrition and lifestyle consultant. Um, and often, you know, in, in this time of year, summertime often is a time for more rejuvenating things. Sometimes, sometimes it's a nice time for reflection and rest. Um, other times, you know, some families are busy with different events and all sorts of things. Uh, as a teacher, even as a student, college, or um, getting my master's degree, I was, you know, we're just always work, work, work in May and June, and it feels like it's so easy to grab the cakes and the goodies that are in the break room. And, um, you know, it's just, it's so easy to just feel like we're working really hard and we feel sort of really toxic and we just can't wait to rest and relax and that's something that I often would think about and so hopefully the summertime there is some space for some self-care and just to rest and relax and um, I will provide you some really great strategies to help you to take care of yourself um, and hopefully some things maybe you haven't thought about before. Um, let's see what's next. So often if we take care of ourselves really well in the summertime, then when it's time for the autumn uh, and that shift, um, then we can be more kind of well equipped. So, so it's all about self-care. And oh, by the way, I'm not a, um, a doctor, medical doctor, therapist. Um, I'm, I come as a nutrition and lifestyle consultant and I'm here just for educational purposes only, all right? So, and if you need to see your doctor, if you're going to take on any, um, any different changes for your, your health or your pharmacist with different medications. So, um, when you hear about self-care, oops, there we go. What do you think of? What's the first thing that comes to mind? That's it. It's true, right? Um, it's time to breathe. Do you think in our society people take enough time for themselves? No. And I feel like, um, especially new mothers, um, uh, people with a lot of kids, uh, it's often a very stressful, uh, and they kind of balk at the idea of self-care, like, I have no time for that. So, But it's so important for us to take the time to nurture ourselves so that we can give to others. So, here's a definition from uh, Oxford Dictionary Online. The practice of taking an active role in protecting one's own well-being and happiness, in particular during periods of stress. Right, so I just want to let you know more about me. So I'm a nutrition and lifestyle consultant, and I often work with people either over the phone or I can go to people's homes or, or um, their chosen places. Um, I uh, have a more holistic model that I work from. I look at the whole person. Often they call that kind of functional nutrition, where you look at the whole person. You kind of, I kind of look at what people are eating, but also what their lifestyle activities are, whether they're moving, how their sleep is, how their stress is. And I promote more fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds and legumes and things like that in the diet. Uh, I think as a society, we don't incorporate enough of those into our diets. Um, and in nutrition school, I worked on my thesis, and it was about chronic stress and weight gain, especially in women. Mm -hmm. So that's something that's near and dear to my work, and that's why I especially like to speak about this, these kinds of topics. So, what I will... Today we'll learn the biochemistry of stress on the body and how it can impact weight gain. How self-care practices can help us come into balance and shed excess weight. How to detoxify through self-care practices and dietary changes. So detoxify sometimes is like a trendy kind of a word, but uh, we can, uh, you'll see how it ties in with stress. 
So again, thank you for being here and taking the time for yourself. Um, many of us, if we're, we're working or taking care of others, um, we often have to balance a number of pressures. We try to do it all. Maybe we have our career, we're trying to get some th other things done. Um, all at the same time, uh, we might feel stressed and weighed down kind of with the pressures of what's going on, but also physically if we're overeating, things like that. So some of us use caffeine and calorie-rich snacks and meals to get through the day, uh, and that's uh, often a common thing uh, to go for. Sometimes you feel tired in the morning and wired at night. Does that, does that um, happen for any of you? It's like, yeah, I get wired. You get wired at night? Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you wake up. Sometimes the opposite. Sometimes I can. Get it, yeah, and then at the end Once of the I day. Once that point where I can just go to bed at 7 o'clock. That's right, yeah. yeah. Wake up, wake up, yeah. yeah. I, actually, I was watching something very interesting, a, a, a lecture the other day. We're talking about like that, that afternoon slump is like, mm -hmm. Even for anybody, for morning lark or night owl or anybody in between, that that slump is what's hard. And then, you know, maybe we pick up during the evening hours, or we, you know, want to go to sleep. So, all right. And in dealing with stress, sleep issues. So, and sleep. If we have issues with sleep, it can really. Um, it can impact almost every system in the body, really. Probably every system. So, um, and in my research, I was talking about women, especially. So, I'll just go into a, a few of the uh, details about how women deal with stress differently than men. So, if you have partners who are males, <laughs> um, they might push through stress, or they might keep going. Um, and for women, sometimes it's uh, very difficult. Uh, so there's a gender gap with women reporting a greater amount of stress in comparison to men. So women are more likely to report physical and emotional symptoms of stress than men. And then there was a study in, in Sweden, more than 3,800 people uh, that were followed over 20 years. And it was found that women with the most demanding jobs actually gain more weight compared with male participants that were in the same roles. So, and they had not gained weight. So it's a very interesting thing. So what is stress? So often stress is uh, something that's viewed as negative and it can be fraught with tension and overwhelm um, versus eustress, which is the more positive form of stress. Maybe there's a puzzle that you want to Put together or you're knitting a blanket or something like that that's a more positive form of stress um, often if we look at stress as a, a, a positive challenge it can help us um, it so the way that we respond to stress um, can be more positive and less of an impact on our bodies but uh, so it in the autonomic nervous system in our bodies we have the sympathetic division and we have the parasympathetic division. It's the sympathetic division where that's where the stress is. That's the stress response. It's kind of a constricted, very tense kind of feeling. But the parasympathetic is where you have relaxation and calm. And in that same system we have the vagus nerve that runs from uh, the neck and goes down to the abdomen. Um, it also connects with the enteric nervous system, which helps us to digest our food. So that's why so many of us tell our, our clients to chew slowly so that we can digest really well and assimilate the nutrients. So we take the time to just chew our food and relax. And if we're in a state of relaxation, it's really helpful for us to be able to digest really well. And what else do I want to say about that? Um, and that leads to the next slide, well, soon. Sometimes when we are in uh, a state of stress, it's called allostatic load. But when it becomes too much, 
there's just so many things tugging on us from all over the place. We become overwhelmed and just can't deal with anything anymore. That's known as allostatic overload. Uh, often it gets certain terms like adrenal fatigue, especially in like the holistic zone. Have you ever heard of adrenal fatigue? You have? Um, often it's um, connected with chronic fatigue in a way. Um, but if you say HPA axis dysfunction, it's a little bit more, um, more correct because it's like this whole kind of axis um, that we'll talk about. And it's not just the adrenals, but it's um, other things. Uh, so in the stress response, we have fight or flight or freeze response. So you know, we might be you know, fighting with somebody or we might want to just get out of the situation and go for a walk. Or we might just freeze and not know what to do, just kind of procrastinate for a while. Um, so those are the kinds of responses that we have. And that's, that sympathetic nervous system kind of goes into action there. So the whole um, HPA axis, it's the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. What happens is when we have a stressful situation, the hypothalamus releases a chemical which tells the pituitary gland to produce another chemical uh, to tell the adrenal glands to pump out stress hormones. And often the stress hormones are cortisol, uh, epinephrine, which is adrenaline, and norepinephrine. And so cortisol, you might have heard a lot in the news where it is kind of a fat storage hormone where it will promote fat around our midsection, around our internal organs. Because if we're in a chronically stressed state, um, our, that fat is designed to protect us. So, any questions so far? All right, okay. So there's some simple self-care practices that we have today. Okay. So it should really be a cornerstone in our lives, these to take care of ourselves and be mindful and check in with ourselves during the day. One thing to do at the beginning of the day is to set the tone for the day. So if you have a hot cup of something or cold cup of something that you like to prepare, these days I like to just make my tea and then just put ice cubes in it. I'll have the ice cubes ready and I just pour my tea on top of it. But anyway, a, a good thing to do is to take your beverage and you can go outside or on the porch or just open the front door and gaze up at the sky right when you wake up and you don't look into direct sunlight uh, but you just have the light enter your eyes and this is really helpful for circadian rhythm. Uh, it promotes uh, the, the sleep and the wake cycle. And if we take 10 deep breaths, that's really helpful to be in that parasympathetic um, part of the day, part, or parasympathetic state to start the day. By taking the deep breaths, we, um, we engage the diaphragm, and when we engage the diaphragm, we um, enter into the parasympathetic, but also we um, activate the lymphatic system. So there's different, the lymphatic system can help us to detoxify our bodies and move, the, move things around. So that's one thing that you can do. And if you have set it up as a practice that you do it every morning, it's really helpful and we connect with uh, nature, we cr create um, a connection with the seasons and the cycles of the year. So that can be very helpful and grounding. And gratitude. So one thing that you can do is before meals, you can say, um, th you can think of three things that you're grateful for. Uh, and that helps us to be relaxed and set the tone for our meal. 
so that we can be in that relaxation state. Uh, what I have here is a jar. I started on January 1st, and what I wanted to do was continue it every single day. I do it sometimes, but I should really do it every night. I was doing this every night. I would write down what I was grateful for. I'd pr pretty much fill up uh, a little card and, and fold it up. And at the end of the year, what I can do is take it out on New Year's Eve and go through everything that I was grateful for for the year, which is a really great kind of treat and a good way to start the new year. Another thing is I have this, it's called One Line a Day. It's a five-year journal. So have you ever heard of a five-year journal before? Mm -hmm. So, well, I just actually started it. So what you do is you fill in, so like the first, sorry, <laughs> the first uh, day of the first year that you start this, you just write here. There's only enough for, you know, what you did that day, some things that happened, maybe um, how you're feeling or uh, anything that was monumental that happened, you just keep going, and then you fill it in year after year, and then you can look back and go, oh, well, today um, I did this, but three years ago was the day that I brought home my new puppy or something like that, so just a nice way to mark time. You could even write down gratitudes as well. And laughter, it's really important to laugh. Do you all like to watch funny movies? And uh, so those, that's really helpful. Um, laughing can help um, uh, so many things. The relaxation response, but also the, it helps the body to produce endorphins and dopamine and serotonin, which are our happiness hormones. Um, and it also boosts and strengthens the immune system. So some of the same benefits of laughter is with music. So this can really help in so many ways. Um, and it releases serotonin, dopamine, oxytocin, that's the, the bonding hormone, prolactin, it decreases stress hormones. It can help us have better sleep and a reduction in symptoms of depression. There's a lot to be said too about making music in a group, like choral music or even at a drumming, which I, I do some drumming classes sometimes. Um, and it increases self-esteem. So dancing also is very helpful. So if you happen to wake up and you're not feeling so great, you can put on some music and kind of dance as you're preparing your breakfast and things like that, and that can really help. Also, personal connection. Um, for females especially, there's a lot of research that says that, you know, uh, a way that females respond to, like, the, the fight or flight situation is that they go and find another female friend, and they can, can um, talk to them and converse with them, invent, and that way there's a bonding that happens, there's a oxytocin that is released, and it makes you feel a lot better. And that's something that's really unique with women especially. So, um, there's anything else here? There's one other thing, one, one thing that you can do is take a bath um, with Epsom salts and a couple drops of lavender. They have little essential oils of lavender downstairs. Have you ever used essential oils? That would be nice. Actually, I, I had my lavender in, in the car before I came in here, so I was using a bit of that. But you get a cup of the Epsom salts and you put it in your water and then a few drops of lavender. The Epsom salts are actually magnesium, as you might know, and magnesium is something that um, in our diet these days, I think people are really deficient in. So this is a really great way to actually absorb the magnesium through our skin. And the way that we absorb magnesium the best is actually through the skin. So using Epsom salt baths is just a really wonderful thing. And you've got lavender and it smells really nice. Uh, and you can relax and take your time there. 
So uh, one thing um, I should say is, in my research, I found that there's so so much that has to do with weight gain and when the when we're stressed. Like I said, the cortisol, other stress hormones, really uh, inspire us. <laughs> Maybe inspire is not the right word, but we end up storing a lot of weight and we, we put on weight and it's harder to get off. So in this way, these practices can help us to relax and calm down so that we can actually have uh, a moment um, and we might be able to shed some weight that way. And it's interesting, there's so many different diet plans out there and ways of eating, but what often is not part of it is stress management. If that was part of it, that's often the root cause of why a lot of people will um, overeat. Um, so that's one way. And if we use a lot of these practices, this helps to detoxify the body because stress uh, encourages uh, free radicals in the body, which are toxic. Um, and if we have these calming practices, it really helps us out. Um, you can do some journaling. Uh, these have just a little space for journaling, but that often gets people started. But you know, if there's a day where you've been dealing with a lot of things going on, or you have uh, people in your family that are ill or uh, not doing well, you can you know take a moment to write things down. Sometimes I'm in the car and I'll be just I'll just talk aloud instead of writing things down. Sometimes that's helpful too. and detoxifying the diet. Really, uh, we can do a lot by removing some things. So, if we minimize caffeine, now I'm not saying to give up coffee if you really enjoy coffee, but if we're able to minimize it or replace it with green tea, which has a lot of antioxidants, that can be very beneficial. And uh, if we minimize or avoid alcohol, because alcohol can deplete something in our body called glutathione, which is our an antioxidant in our body. And um, that's helpful for detoxification. So if we don't have uh, so much of it because of our alcohol consumption, uh, it can make a real difference. So we try to take out the refined sugar and oils and flours. So uh, with the oils, especially sometimes People don't get good quality oil. They often uh, have different kinds of vegetable oils that can be really processed. Uh, a lot of the packaged foods and processed foods. Uh, did you know that canola oil is absolutely poison? <laughs> it was not meant to be put in the human body. It was meant for machinery. Uh -huh. And it clogs your system. Every time I eat canola oil by mistake, I get pains in my chest. Oh, yeah. I go to a restaurant. You know, mm -hmm. I have home fries and, and I walk out with pains in my chest. Oh, oh, that's terrible. I know. And it's so processed that actually they have to add a deodorizer kind of thing to it because it smells so bad. The rapeseed plant was not meant for exactly to put into a, a human body or, mm -hmm. or any, any animals or humans. Yeah, that's right. And yet it's in everything we eat almost. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame. I know there's more like cold pressed canola oils. I just stay away from it to begin with, but um, it doesn't matter. It's I know. Rest or, uh, yeah, you know, it's yeah. Anything um, because it is a, it goes through quite a processing, and they have to deodorize it and everything else. Uh, and also, they hy hydrogenate it often to keep its shelf stable because it, it's uh, what they call a polyunsaturated fatty acid. So it's something that's actually really fragile with heat. So if they oxygenate it, the molecules, it can be shelf stable, but very processed. So, um, and flowers as well, there can be a lot, of, a lot of flowery products that can really be inflammatory as well. Processed and packaged foods, so many additives and different things. Um, also some of these things, uh, it's helpful to eat organic produce for sure. Uh, yes, and uh, if you um, see that you have some food allergens or sensitivities, canola oil or maybe even dairy or uh, sometimes people have soy issues or any other little things, um, it's best to try to avoid them um, that way. You can just feel better.
And then, of course, today we learned the biochemistry of stress on the body and how it can impact weight gain, how self-care practices can help us come into balance and shed excess weight. It's that thing, just to hammer home the fact that there's so many diet programs out there. Cut carbs, cut sugar, cut fat, cut this, cut that. But nobody's really looking at the stress factor. Like if everything's going great in life, I don't really want to overeat. And I can be really mindful about my decisions with food, but if you know, something's going on, it's easier to want to. Our, our metabolic rate raises and we want to eat more. That's one thing I didn't go into, but um, that often the stored glucose becomes more available in our body. And so if we have this ongoing stress response over and over again, our, our body seems to be stuck on a, in a fight or flight um, situation. It could create you know, high blood sugar all the time where we kind of get into a pre-diabetic or diabetic state the fatty acids and like cholesterol and triglycerides go into the bloodstream more often, so that can be a reason why some people might have a high cholesterol. Um, and a lot of other issues, a lot of immune issues and things like that, but through these self-care practices, we can kind of reverse that or, or put the good stuff into our heads, so, yeah. And then how to detoxify. All right, so we did it. Um, and if you have any questions at any time, feel free to, to email me. Yeah, so that's P-A-N-E-T-T-A -T -T dot Amy at gmail dot com. Or Amy Panetta dot com. And also on Facebook and on uh, Instagram. Instagram. <laughs> I can't do it. No. <laughs> Beyond me. Sometimes I do classes with kids, or yeah. There was one time I was at the Barry Senior Center. That was fun. We had a class with um, local local food. So it was more like in September. No, that actually was in December. But of course, the harvest was still around. So yeah. a lot of squash soups and things like that. So it's fun. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.